Have you ever seen what's inside of a gas water heater? Now, I've done some different things with water heaters before, but this is one of my favorite things. Actually, we have a water heater cut open, so you can actually see the inside of it. And I wanna reach out and say thanks to Bradford White for everything they've done for us. They've actually given us a gas and an electric water heater. Today, we're gonna to talk about the gas water heater. Now, this video is brought to you by Ferguson. We teamed up with Ferguson because of everything that they do for plumbers, the plumbing community, and, and the way they help us do cool stuff. Let me know, have you ever seen inside of a natural gas water heater? And one other thing, if you're a plumbing company owner, do you put labels on them to let people know how to shut them off or how to drain them in case they have a leak? What do you do for your customers? That's something that we do on water heaters. And I just saw it on here and it made me think about it. So anyway, leave me a comment down below. What do you do? And have you ever seen inside of a water heater? Cause I gotta tell you, this is one of my favorite things. I was plumbing for 35 years before I'd ever seen the inside of a water heater. I hate to say that, but it's true. I actually got to go up to Grand Rapids, Michigan, go through the plant and actually see how they built these. So the people at Bradford White were phenomenal to number one, let me come up there, but to get to go through their iTech training. But to get to go through their iTech training, to get up there to learn how to work on their tankless water heaters, their natural gas water heaters, and their electric water heaters. We actually took one of their tankless, took it apart, and put it back together. And I gotta tell you, they've got so much room inside their tankless, it makes them easy to work on. But today, we're actually talking about the 50 gallon natural gas six year warranty water heater. And I gotta tell you, this is the one that we sell more than anything that we have. Now the neat thing is you can actually tell this is a gas water heater just by looking at it. If you're a homeowner and you're not sure if your water heater is gas or electric, and believe it or not, some people don't know. When they call and tell us their water heater's out, we ask them, is it gas or electric? They're like, well, I'm really not sure. Well, if your water heater has a flue pipe or a chimney or anything like this on the top, it's a gas water heater. Meaning there's actually a burner assembly in the bottom, and we'll get to that here in a minute, but has to go out somewhere. Those fumes have to go out. That way you don't poison the people in the house with bad gases. So the chimney on top is actually where the gas fumes come out. And you've got a cold water inlet and a hot water outlet. These, these are silver, these are dielectric nipples. And what the dielectric nipple does is it keeps electrolysis from occurring from two different type metals. That may be a little bit more information than you wanna know, but it's true. What we like to do is we also like to put a union on here. That way we can disconnect this water heater, slide it out, slide a new one in in the future if we ever go back to change one. So having a union right here makes it great. That way you can actually connect and unconnect. Also another way to know which is your cold side, if you can't see the top of it, there should be a valve here on the cold water inlet side. And I have seen some plumbers that actually put a valve on the hot water outlet side. Either way, you definitely want one on the cold side. If you're changing out a water heater or installing one, we actually recommend putting a new valve on there. They went to lead free a few years back. And if you've got an old gate valve, you really don't want to close it because chances are it may not open back up. Now this is actually the TMP. This is the temperature and pressure relief valve. And what this is for, this is your safety device. And a lot of people, unfortunately, that don't have a plumbing license, actually tell people they don't need to run these, they don't need to hook them up. I've actually seen plugs put in these. The bad thing is that makes it dangerous for your water heater. It doesn't give it a place to actually release pressure. So what happens is if pressure builds up or the temperature gets too hot in here, it actually opens up. Now you can open it manually, which is what I'm doing right here, and it lets water come out here. But it's designed so if it gets too hot or there's too much pressure in there, which is what would happen if the water gets too hot in a closed system and there is no outlet, it actually pops off and lets the pressure out. That's why they're called pop-off valves. The correct name is a temperature and pressure relief valve. This is something that if there's a union on it or it's something you can cut and put back together, this is something that a homeowner could change out. But to be honest, when it comes to temperature and pressure relief valves, man, I think this is something most people would wanna call a plumber for. So on the inside of the water heater, I've showed you the outside, except for the control valve, but we'll get done in a little bit. This is what is unique about the cold water line too. This is your cold water dip tube. And what this actually does, this actually lets the cold water come in 
to the bottom of the tank. Remember, heat rises. So if this dip tube was not here or in the old style, when plumbers would just hook a female adapter up here and actually start soldering right there, the top of the dip tube would melt and drop down in there. And I know because I've heard that happen. Now they're designed where hopefully you don't do that. But what would happen then, without the dip tube, cold water would come in and it's being drawn out as hot water over here. Well, the cold water wouldn't even have time to make it to the bottom. So it would actually get drawn up on the other side. So a cold water dip tube is something you definitely need in there. The other thing that you can see right here is the flue. Now the flue is what is in the center of the pipe. Remember, you've got a burner underneath and all this heat coming up and those fumes have to go somewhere. Now this is what's in the center of the flue. And as you see, you've got these little plates on it. Now what happens is these hot fumes come up it, but whenever they hit the plates like this, it pushes them out to keep that outer wall hot. What that does, that adds more of a heating surface to the inside of your water heater. Actually, it makes it more efficient because when that flame's going, now these hot fumes coming up can actually heat up the inside of the pipe too, and that's gonna make your water hot. So it's gonna make it where your burner does not have to burn as long. Okay, so like I said, that goes down inside here in the center of the flue. And as you can see, that flue is about three and a half, four inch round piece of steel. So when the hot fumes come up it and they actually get pushed to the outside, this is gonna be hot so it gives you more of a heating surface. Really a great thing. This is one thing too. On the inside back here, you've actually got your anode rod. On this water heater, it's actually attached to the hot side. So actually, when you pull out this dielectric nipple, there's actually the anode rod attached to it. So actually, to replace the anode rod on this model, actually loosen it up. You see how you've got a separation up here at the top with the holes in it. What this does, this allows the hot water, which should be at the very top of your water heater, to actually come in through these holes and then come up out the nipple. So replacing an anode rod on these is actually something that you should do about the end of the first year. The anode rod is actually a sacrificial rod that is actually over the course of the life of it, it's gonna give itself up and it's gonna be drawn to the outer part of the tank to plug up any cracks, any little micro fissures, anything at all, any little bitty pinholes that could occur, this is gonna actually go out and plug those up. Really neat design. Now down at the bottom, you've got the control valve and the burner assembly. Now the control valve actually has a thermostat that goes back inside the water heater to detect the temperature to tell it when to kick on, when to release the gas to fire the burner assembly up. And it's also got a thermocouple going down to the burner assembly that should stay hot when the pilot light is on to let it know it's okay to send gas to it. Think about it, if there's no pilot there and it sends a bunch of gas to it, it's never gonna burn. Then what's gonna happen is the house is gonna fill with gas. Water heaters have been modified to where they are one of the safest pieces of equipment you can actually have at your house now. They have done so much work on them to improve the way they're designed, the way they're built, the way they're manufactured, everything about them has improved, including the thickness of the insulation. Now that happened in 2015 to again, make them more efficient. You've got your gas control valve then going out to it down to the bottom, you have your burner assembly. Your burner assembly and your gas control valve, these are things that you may want a plumber to work on, but if you look at the manufacturer's recommendations, study what they tell you to do, this is something that I know many homeowners have actually done it. Remember, I'm located in Texas. And in Texas, if you own your home, you're allowed to do any of your plumbing work yourself. So I have seen homeowners do stuff like this themselves. Guys, I gotta tell you, looking inside the water heater, was really cool for me. Like I said, after 35 years of plumbing, I had never seen the inside of one until Bradford White showed me what they look like. Now, the only other thing that you have is a drain valve. What I love about the drain valves on these, they are a full metal drain valve with a quarter turn ball valve in it. This is great because when you have problems and you need to drain your water heater, whether you've got a change of gas control valve or you're just trying to flush it, you want a valve that's gonna work each and every time that you turn it on. And I gotta tell you, these really do work. One thing about them too, about the quarter turn ball valve, once you turn it open, if there is sediment in the bottom, you can take something and push in there to kind of help clear it up to where you can 
help get all that out. I want to say thank you to the people at Ferguson for sponsoring this and allowing us to do that. You can get your Bradford White water heaters at ferguson.com. That's exactly where I get mine. Anyway, thanks to Ferguson and thank you to Bradford White. I really do appreciate both of you and everything you do for the plumbers and the plumbing community. Anyway, I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.